I really want to standardize the dimensions I move in for pattern drafting videos. You may remember, or you forgot, or skipped past me saying that the different colors of chalk signify asymmetries in clients. So if you used a blue chalk on the pattern, it would mean something was different on the right side. If you use the lightest red, it's different on the left side. But tailors usually use brown card or pattern drafting paper. So whilst I use white, so using white chalk on that paper isn't going to be any good for either of us. And besides, we're not working with asymmetrical clients, we're working with standard measurements for now. The standard measurements, by the way, being a height of 170, which is the navel to the floor, I think. Regardless, that's the height we're working with for now. And you may or may not know the navel is just the first prominent bone at the bump at the bottom of your neck so you can probably feel it's just there nape to the waist that's the natural waist that's taken obvious i would imagine i'll go into significantly more detail in the measuring video the jacket length which is a design choice decided is 73 for this in this case the across back is 38 so that's on the back though about here to here across your shoulder blades across your shoulder blades the sleeve length which is measured from the navel this time you could measure it from the from just the top but we've got it from the navel the chest is 92 waist is 85 the seat is 98 and the scale this time is half the chest rather than the seat. So in the context of jackets, scale is half the waist, so 46. Then you've got half quarter and eighth. And the psi length, S-C-Y-E, is, 20, is 22.75. So the psi length is from the navel to the underarm, not here, but to the height of the underarm. So it's measured in a very specific way, which, you know, we'll get on to. And full disclosure, the sleeve system we're using, or I'm showing, I made up. So there's about an eight in seven chance that it doesn't work. But I suppose I'll find out before you need to. I made it up from the actual one I was shown and an actual tailor's method and it's seemingly a very short sleeve so you'll only need about 80 centimeters if you're using pattern paper and for the front and back pattern if you're using the 50 centimeter wide lining paper you're going to need to take about two 80 centimeter lengths and stick them together and this is a relatively small jacket pattern so maybe you'll need more when you take your own measurements but I suppose you'll find out. But if you have regular pattern card or paper, then whatever, peace out. Start with a line going down the length of the page, which serves as the preliminary center back line. Make sure there are a few centimeters at the top of the page and mark point zero. From zero, which represents the navel, one is the side depth being, like I said, 22 and a half centimeters. Then from the navel to the waist is 42 and a half centimeters down and is point two. From the waist, point three, the hip line is an eighth of the height further down. In this case, 22 and a quarter centimeters. Then the jacket length, from zero, which is 73 centimeters and 0.4. Point 0.5 is halfway between 0 and 1, and point 0.6 is halfway between point 0 and 5, and square off all of those points. Now we're shaping the back, measuring 2 centimeters at point 0.2 for point 0.7, 
and measure in a centimetre and a half from 3, 4.8. This very much depends on a person's shape and stance, their back may curve in more or less, but these are okay general measurements for practice. Starting at point 5, chalk the new centre back through 7 and 8 and straighten it out to the hem past 8. Be sure and check that it's a good natural line and redraw it if needs be. Point 9 is 8th scale plus 2 centimetres out from 0, so 7.8 centimetres, then 10 is up 2 centimetres from there. Join 0 and 10 with the line that will sit across the neck. You don't want it to be too straight because it will push against the neck, the neck will win, and there will be rumples in the fabric as it's pushed back. From 5, go out half the across back measurement plus a centimetre, so 19 plus 1, and square 11 up and down to lines 0 and 1. Point 12 is where the line you made crosses the line from point 5. Go up another 2 centimetres for point 13, and then forward 2 centimetres for 14. Connect 14 and 10. Chalk a concave shoulder line there, not too exaggerated though. Point 15 is where the vertical line at point 11 meets the line below it, line 1. Line 16 is 1 8 scale above it. The 17 and 18 is half and 1 and a half centimetres out from 16 respectively. 14, 11 and 17 connect to make the back armhole. 19 is 2 centimetres back towards you from 15. Square all the way down to the hem. Point 20 is where that line intersects with the seat line. The one from point 3. And go out from point 20, 1 centimetre to shape the side seam. Join 18 and the point where the line from 19 intersects the waistline and 20. But you do best not to infringe on point 15. From 15, if the construction line doesn't already extend significantly further outwards, mm, measure 1 quarter scale plus 4.5 centimetres, so 16, 4.21 and then measure half scale minus two and a half centimetres, so twenty and a half, for twenty-two. Twenty-two is our initial centre front line, so you can square that off and make sure that the lines from zero, one, two, three, and four intersect with it. From twenty-one, measure towards twenty-two, one-eighth scale plus four centimetres, 9.8 centimetres in this case, for point twenty-three, and square it up to the top line, which is twenty-four. Connect twenty-four and twelve. For 25, you need to measure the shoulder width on your back pattern along the curve. Take one centimetre from that measurement, because it will be given ease, and mark that length from 24 as 25. Then 26 is one centimetre vertically down from 25, and then connect 26 and 24 with a slightly convex line, which of course will be married to the concave line on the back. Point 27 is 2 centimetres up from point 21, and point 28 is another centimetre out from point 18. Those we'll save for later. From 24, 29 is 1 eighth scale down. 30 is half a centimetre towards you from 29. Connect 24 and 30, and then draw a right angle from that line at point 30 extending beyond the centre front. Point 31 is 3 centimetres out from 24. Points 32 and 33 are where the waist and the hip line from 2 and 3 hit the front. Then, for 34 and 35, you need to measure the width of your back pattern at those heights. So along the waist construction line, measure the distance between your centre back and side seam. With these measurements, it's going to be around 16 centimetres. Half the waist measurement that you took, or that I gave you in this case, add 8 centimetres for the darts and space in general, and take away the back width. Measure that from 32 and christen it 34. It's basically the same for 33 to 35, except you're adding 5 centimetres to the seat measurement.
Point 36 is where the centre front hits the hemline, and 37 is then 2 centimetres lower than that, and you can connect 37 to the bottom of your front pattern side seam. 38 is 2 centimetres further out from 32, and you can connect that to 37. This will be your true centre front, so chalk a nice curve down to the hem. Some tailors keep it fairly straight so that the wearer's shirt won't generally show. Some also have templates to draw on their curve right at the bottom. Point 39 is 2.5 centimetres forwards from 21. Square that all the way to the hem, which makes 40. Measure 39 to 40, half it, and take 1, and mark it on the same line from 40 as 41. Then you'll, then you'll need a line parallel to that one to measure the same length from another point on the hem. Connect your new point to 41, and that will be your pocket line. It's slanted so that it looks straight on the pattern when it's turned into a three-dimensional bespoke suit. Center, centered on 41, measure 16 centimeters, eight either side, for the size of the pocket. This can absolutely be changed to suit you, but it's a good rule for now. From 21 again, 42 is four centimeters towards us. Square it down to the waistline for 43. This will be the side dart. Measure. 0.75 cm and 1.5 cm out from 34. Then mark from 42 through the 3 quarter centimeter point down to the pocket. Then again from 42 connect the 6 quarter centimeter point. Then from 43 and said 6 quarter centimeter point go to, go to where the middle line hits the pocket. The width and elevation of this dart can be changed to change the silhouette but be sure to reflect any change in the measurement of 32 to 34. Now chalk on the front armhole. Put simply, it's a line from 28 going through 42 and 27 and ending on 26. 27, by the way, is an important part of making the sleeve. You just need to make it a nice and natural, almost egg shape. Having placed the armhole, there's the breast pocket, and you need to find the furthest out point of your armhole. Use your ruler and mark it on the side line. Then, 14 centimeters ahead of that is where the pocket will just about start. For now, we'll make the pocket on a slight slant so, so that it'll appear straight later, but as a style thing, it can be changed. Mark half a centimeter and three centimeters up from the half centimeter point find where the other side of the pocket is. 10 centimeters is a good length. Find that back on the side line. Mark two and a half centimeters up from there and connect the points of your rhombus. For the front dart, for most people, it's only taken in a little bit, but for a prominent chest like a lot of women have, you'd need to take in a lot more. Find one centimeter in from the front pocket and carry it on up to the side line. Then find about seven centimeters below the side on that line. Then, on the waist, mark half a centimetre either side of your line and connect the four points. 44 is a centimetre above 38 and is the start of the break line, because we don't want the lapel to start exactly where the button is. Connect 44 to 31. A good lapel width is 7 centimetres, so we'll find where 7 centimetres at right angles to the line we drew hits the line we drew from 30. Now we'll draw on the gorge line. We have guidelines, but it is a style thing. To keep to the lines, chalk from 24 and stay mostly parallel to the break line and curve out violently at the bottom to the end of the lapel line. Then connect the end of the 7cm line you drew to 44, which will be the shape of the lapel. Either a straight line, which, like, no, or give it a little bit of a belly, which is, which is the technical term. Keep the curve bottom loaded though. Now, flip it over and do that whole thing again. Cut out the pattern. I've shown the whole thing so that I am explicit in showing that the seam steps and such like are cut the way they are.
I've left drawing on the buttons to here because I forgot them twice in making the video, and failed to actually hit record when I tried to do a reshoot after cutting it out. But basically, mark the point two centimeters into the pattern on the waistline, which will be the center of the button, and the front edge of the buttonhole. Then, for this jacket, do the same thing 12 centimeters below the first. You need to trace the armhole that you made and cut out. Ideally start with the back pattern and trace around it to below the side line. And copy off point 11 and carry on its line so that you can make it straight across. Then with the front pattern, overlap the seam steps so that so that the armhole is in its finished state. Line up the side line too, and trace it off, and copy off point 27. Extend the line from 11 to the other side, and from those two points, join up to the ends of the shoulder line. This basically, this indicates the basic height of the armhole, side to the crown. Measure from the intersecting point vertically down to the horizontal line, in my case 4.7 centimeters. Measure from the middle line down to the side line, in my case 11.4 centimeters. Measure 0.27 to the front pattern's top shoulder in a straight line, in my case 16.8 centimeters. Measure the tip of the back shoulder to point 11 in a straight line, in, in my case, 8 centimeters. These are the top sleeve length. Finally, measure from 11 to 27 along the curve, in my case, 22 centimeters. This is the under sleeve. Start with zero, a straight line along the length of the page, and cross it at the top. Down from there to 1 is the crown to the line below it, 4.7 centimeters. From 1 to 2 is down to the side line, so another 11.4 centimeters. And then 3 is 2 centimeters below that. Square those off. From point 2, measure the top sleeve, 16.8 plus 8, 24.8, then take away 2. Find the point that the 22.8 cm line touches line 1, and mark it point 4. Find the midpoint of 1 and 4, then move another centimeter towards 4. This is 5. Square it up to the top line, making point 6, which is the crown. 7 is 6 cm towards 1 from 4, and serves as a guide for making the shape of the sleeve. Another good guide is using the shape of your hand. Display your hand and just hand rail it around to four. There are a bunch of systems and algorithms and stuff you could use for this, but it's a lot of work for a little different to what I'm doing. For the length of the sleeve, you could have just taken the length of the sleeve, but we have Naple to wrist. So we need to take away half the across back measurement. I've just put 19 centimeters on the crown and measured down to 80. Found where that is on the first line we drew and marked that on. The sleeve is going to be curved and you want the cuff to be at right angles, otherwise the cuff will be more of an arrow shape than we'd like it to be. Mark 2.5 centimeters in the sleeve, about halfway down, and chalk from 3 to the cuff. The width of the cuff is a style choice, but quarter scale plus 4 is a fine rule, though it does seem far too large to me. We'll see. On the back side of the cuff, chalk up to 0.4. Old timey sleeves would have, would go way out at the elbow, but, but a slimmer contemporary sleeve will be okay for us, or whatever you want to do. From two again, use the under sleeve measurement minus one, so 22 take one, and same as earlier, find where it touches line one, except this time, move one centimeter towards point one. This point eight. Yeah, I, I know I've written the 17. You'll also need to mark one centimeter into the pattern from point two. This is where the armhole ends. 
17 is where the under sleeve starts. The under sleeve needs to hit the side line, line 3. You can draw the under sleeve more curved or straighter. If you do it straight, it'll create more rumbles behind the sleeve, or fullness in this case, which allows greater mobility. So, straighter for shooting and general jackets, and curved and proper for dinner jackets, I suppose. The curve needs to extend above and behind point 17 to account for the seam allowance, allowing the front and back to actually be sewn together. And from there, you'll draw on the back of the undersleeve, and it will join the cuff at the same point as the top sleeve. At some point you want to check that the length of the curves slightly exceed the length of the armhole. You definitely need some easing to be able to put in, a minimum of a couple of centimetres for the top sleeve and a little less than that for the undersleeve, based on the fabric that you're using. Something that you could do is what's called a false forearm, which just moves the forward seam of the sleeve. It's as simple as taking two centimetres of the whole front seam from the undersleeve and slapping it on to the top sleeve. Alex Cook, director at Henry Pool & Co. Savile Row, doesn't use a false forearm, so as is is good enough for me. You need to cut out the sleeve now. Start with cutting out the top sleeve pattern from the paper, then proceed to trace around the new pattern onto another piece of paper. You could use a tracing wheel and trace the undersleeve, that would use slightly less paper I think, but add that to the ever-growing list of tailoring equipment that I don't actually have. Plus I'm far too lazy to do that. Trace around it and copy off the sideline, then cut that new top sleeve out, and cut the undersleeve out of your original sleeve. Slip some paper underneath the front pattern at the top of the lapel. With our 7cm lapel, mark the point 3.5cm from the tip of said lapel onto our new paper, or whatever measurement you want to use. Then follow the line 44 to 31, or the break line, up onto the paper too. The point that the line on the new paper starts is 1. Square across your line at the shoulder line, this is 2. Continue up from 2 the length of your back neck for point 3. Square off the top a little towards yourself and mark the point 0.75cm on the line. This is point 4. Connect 4 and 1. And super gently curve it in a convex manner, not going above the line from 1 to 3. This is the collar break line. Square off 1 to 4 and mark 3.5cm towards yourself for 5 and 4cm away for 6. 7 is 3.5cm towards yourself from 2 and 8 is another 4cm away from 2. The 3.5cm represents the collar stand and the 4cm represents the fall of the collar. 9 from 1 is the seam allowance, so 1cm below it. Carry on this seam allowance to 1cm below the notch, then shape the lapel. What with the inlay and all, the angle can be changed later, but just pick one angle for now, 
and draw about half the width of the lapel for 10. Curve the seam allowance around to 7 and then up to 5. Join 6 and 8 and then 8 and 10 in a curve. Give it the inlay now, so 1 centimeter on the back, which is actually just the seam allowance, 2.5 centimeters along the top, and 3 centimeters beyond the notch. And also, I've acclimated to the new audio quality, so it sounds bad again. I feel like I'm going to need to replace it with an even more expensive one. And my top tip for this video that I determined is after your fourth or fifth pattern, you'll, or, or whenever you can start to do it without, whenever you can start to do some of it without help, may seem obvious, but I just thought to, you know, just write down the few bits that you don't memorize. Write it down and maybe memorize it or keep it in your box of tailory things.